Hi, I'm Dave Stedman with American Seal of Packing. I want to talk to you today about braided packing, also called compression packing. Now, braided packing and compression packing have been on the market for quite a few years um, and have evolved. At one time, they were primarily vegetable fiber type of materials, being jute or flax or hemp, which is no longer sold because people like to smoke their pumps too much. But um, uh, the next step beyond that was asbestos, which is no longer available also because of the uh, cancer issues uh, of mesothelioma. So uh, the next step in the evolution of, of braided packing was PTFE. If it was made with DuPont's resin, it was called Teflon packing. Um, however, uh, PTFE packing, the nice part about it, 0 to 14 pH range, uh, so it handled 99% of the chemicals out there um, it was also good for up to 500 degrees in temperature. So it gave you the same temperature range that the non or the asbestos packings used to handle. Um, so it did replace that. It did give you a wider range in chemical applications, but you had to be careful with it because PTFE uh, packing or Teflon packing could be put into an application and the friction from a shaft would cause it to grow at a faster rate than metal, as far as the heat is concerned, um, which the next step from that was that it was actually cutting into your shafts. So it had to be adjusted uh, gently, so it didn't get too much compression and too much friction as a result, and, and then cut into your shafts. But it's an exceptional material and uh, is still used today. Uh, the next packing that came out onto the market were aramid fiber or Kevlar type packings. Uh, easily identifiable by its color. Uh, Kevlar is a is the stuff that's in bulletproof vests. Uh, most people are aware of it. It has tinsel strengths that are greater than steel, so it's a very durable material, excellent for abrasive applications. Um, however, in reciprocating applications, it works great. In centrifugal applications, it tends to trap abrasives onto the packing, causing it to act like a grinding wheel. So it did evolve a bit. And your most common packings that use uh, Kevlar in centrifugal pump applications uh, would utilize another packing in the core and only use the aramid fiber on the corners. Um, so you, it acts as a anti-extrusion device as well as a wiper. Um, and the core is generally either a GFO, uh, which is a blend of flexible graphite, or excuse me, a blend of graphite and PTFE, uh, straight PTFE, or uh, more often a PTFE coated acrylic yarn uh, is used in the center. Um, so that's that's another step in the evolution. The PTFE graphite blend that I've referred to, it's typically a 60-40 ratio, and this is what it looks like. Um, there are the most common out there was originally developed by W.L. Gore, an exceptional material which we do offer. Um, and there's also import materials that have a similar composition. However, we prefer the uh, the W.L. Gore product. Um, it is good for 500 degrees, and because it's both graphite and Teflon, and they both have a 0 to 14 pH range, it's excellent in a wide range of applications because it has um, a high percentage of graphite. It is not uh, prone to the growing and the cutting of the shafts that the PTFE did because it now grows at near the rate of, uh, of metal as far as the heat expansion is concerned so you, you don't have that issue and it is fairly resistant to abrasives uh, wastewater treatment plants love it because it does hold up to their abrasive applications um, other styles of packing include carbon yarn or graphite yarn sometimes difficult to tell the difference by by looking at uh, they all look like a, a black hair, but this is a filament yarn. Uh, if somebody asks for a graphite packing, bear in mind graphite packing was a common term used for the old asbestos coated in graphite. Uh, it's also used for the non-asbestos coated in graphite. It's also used as a uh, term for a graphite packing, which is a graphite filament packing, a much more expensive product, or even flexible graphite. So if somebody tells you you're looking or they need 
graphite packing, uh, you need to define exactly what type of graphite they're looking for. Graphite or carbon can be coated with PTFE. Uh, this is our, our standard, uh, this is a pan-based carbon base, uh, carbon yarn that's coated with PTFE. There's also a pitch base. Uh, the dif difference is the tinsel strength is better with the pitch base packing. Um, Another style of packing is a braid over core, and this would be a strictly a valve stem packing because of the wire that's located inside of it uh, that can, of course, tear up a shaft. Uh, but for high pressure applications, this is a, uh, a most common way to go about things, at least it was. Uh, in recent years, flexible graphite's taking over a lot of those because you do solve the, the VOC emission issues because flexible graphite seals so well. Flexible graphite always looks like a, um, a shiny, silvery material. Um, it is 99 point whatever uh, flexible gra or graphite or carbon. Um, and depending on the, uh, the source of the material, now you can see the one on my right here, the way it's woven is, is kind of a heavy weave. And here you have a, a tighter weave. Uh, this in particular is, is easily identifiable because of the weave, and this is a genuine graphoil product. So the purity of this packing is much better than the import type materials, um, which generally also have higher sulfur content because of the way they're manufactured. Um, but if it's cost, you're probably going to go this way. If you want the better material, you definitely should go this way. Um, and that's the graph oil product. Uh, to control VOCs in a, um, for API 589-607 applications for the fire test, uh, this in particular is an excellent packing. It is flexible graphite that's actually wrapped with Inconel wire all around every braid. So you have a high density of, of Inconel wire inside this packing, giving it strong resistance to high pressure applications. Uh, try to ignore the train. And um, the packing is uh, very, very durable, 0 to 14 pH range, uh, temperature range up to, well, it's going to be tied to the, the limitations of the Inconel wire. If it's pure flexible graphite, it would be up to 5,000 degrees, but it certainly be good for 850 degrees in an oxidizing atmosphere. Um, one last uh, evolution of packing is really in the design of the way the packing is actually manufactured. Now, this is called an anti-keystone packing, and you can see that it's bigger at the base than it is on the ID. As I bend the packing and wrap it around the shaft, it then becomes square. That prevents anti-keystoning, particularly in very tight, round, um, you know, if you're going to tightly around a small shaft, you'll tend to get keystoning on the ID. And if you're getting keystoning on the ID, see if I can do it with this. Maybe a little bit. But if you keystone on the ID, such as kind of like right there, um, that would cause a leak path. So the anti-keystone is a, uh, it's not a bad solution for some applications. And we do offer it here at American Seal and Packing. Uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, compression packing, we'd be happy to ha answer them. This is not the, uh, the limit of, uh, of what we offer. So if you have something else you're looking for, certainly give us a call. That number is 714-593-9780. Our web address is www.aspseal.com. I'm Dave Stedman, and we're American Seal and Packing.